India and Nepal these two countries are facing a lot of hatred right now a lot of rules that reigns the pedestal of these two countries have changed drastically if we go back we find that indians and nepalese shared a relationship which was proportionate to the relationship of siblings we shared the same culture and religious ties that led to an open border attachment but recently we find ourselves losing that friendship for political differences caused by the chinese influence of communism ram bahadur thapa announced that as per the new rule any indian girl marrying a nepalese citizen will have to wait for a minimum of 7 years to get a citizenship nepal's good relationship with india has always been beneficial to the citizens both emotionally and financially nepalese people have settled in india brought up their families with good upbringing and financial bliss personally i have read about a lot of monarchs in the shade of history but they were all in the books but it was only the king of nepal the blue blood of the shah dynasty king birendra shah that i heard of and saw in the television and papers he was the beloved of the people of nepal he was a visionary a man with a lot of hope and patience to work for the progress of nepal i had read that young birendra was a vivid traveler he had walked barefoot to a lot of places to understand the problems of his subjects king birendra the then crown prince was educated well in Harvard University and the University of Tokyo he was soon to be crowned as the absolute monarch of nepal in the medieval style court of the close bordered nepal before becoming the king he was married to the beautiful wide-eyed princess of the rana dynasty of nepal ashwarya rajya lakshmi an arranged marriage much like that in the medieval centuries soon after Everyone welcomed the Crown Prince of Nepal, Dipendra Bir Bikram Shah. The couple had three children, and the eldest was always set apart from the rest. In 1973, the three-year-old prince witnessed the gala of the world's royalty gathering to witness the crowning ceremony of his parents. The young prince had known it from an early age that he would be the next successor of the throne. that would give rise to the modern nepal dipendra's parents wanted his son to be aware and influenced by the brave heart army of nepal the crown prince was the best of both parents he was an excellent student a throbbing sports person a poet and a patriot likewise it was a trend in nepal that all the children in the monarch family were allowed to keep weapons and pistols and were to learn the art of war the prince had a collective interest in guns and he was very loyal to the subject of love prince dipendra was sent in a western style boarding school in kathmandu valley where his academic and physical strength bewitched everyone later he was educated in eton london like most of the royals eton showed the prince that there is a world outside the monarchy which is more open minded and modern to the perspective of young people who are seeking to see the world in their own terms he sold boots there won in the karate competition and fell in love yes he was introduced to the beautiful divyani rana the rival clan of the shah dynasty a headstrong girl whose maternal branches were directly connected to the royal family of the Sindhyas in Gwalior she was affluent elegant and perfect in the eyes of young dipendra but not in the eyes of crown prince of nepal prince dipendra was very keen to marry her and eventually persuaded her carrying her photo with him but the monarchy of nepal which was only a constitutional monarchy right now did not accept devyani at all Queen Ishwarya decided that it was her decision alone to choose the right woman for her son. All this sounds seriously medieval, 
and no of no importance at all this became a concept of rising tension of the crown prince because for him the standard of royalty caste and creed personal vendetta are all terribly stupid the prince was into drinking and now the intake of marijuana and hash became very regular as 10 years had passed by since he first made devyani rana he was stopped by a choice either his royal position or his marriage to devyani rana at a family gathering in the king's palace where everyone was having a good time the narayanidi palace was quite protective but on usual fridays most of guards went off duty a sudden cluster of gunshots were heard consecutively and the palace was at a state of chaos and emergency prince dipendra's self frustration was growing and according to dipendra's brother in law goraksham sher jang bahadur rana who was an eye witness to the tragedy and was shot at leg and chest reveals that it was the crown prince who assassinated his family at the crown prince 29th birthday he tried to make himself clear that whoever comes in his way will face dangerous consequences nobody took his words seriously back then but he meant it all the same the crown prince was dressed in the artillery uniform and was found unconscious with bullets in his head and eventually king birendra was shot in his shoulder and stomach along with 12 members lying dead and injured princess shruti was just 26 years old when she died the queen tried to confront her son along with her younger son prince nirajan and both of them died with penetrating injuries their bodies were at their worst split into two halves the next day the whole nepal mourned the loss of their sovereigns everyone was in streets waiting to pay their last respect people couldn't believe that it was the crown prince who shot the family and fearing for her life devyani rana had to leave nepal Chaos broke out in Nepal as they have always seen the crown prince as a perfect person who was much loved by his people but to me i think it's the medieval style court which sounded archaic and meaningless a family was too forceful to fulfill the prince's earthly wishes the closure of monarchy for a prince was meant to be a king these things gathered around too much around prince dipendra that it decided to end the entire royal game once and for all i personally feel sorry for him had things been better he would still be alive ruling nepal in a better way but a lot of things remain a mystery like why was there no post mortem carried out how was the prince shot in the left side after being right handed if he shot himself why was the scotland yard police not given the permission to investigate the matter why was the security re- late in reaching the palace perhaps we might never know this was the tragic end of the 280 year old monarchy in nepal